In the diaspora, we have a certain predisposition to view the life of African royalty from a limited, singular lens. African societies and how they functioned throughout the continent were very diverse. Some groups of African people exhibited more patriarchal structures over matriarchal, and others in the reverse. This reality brings credence to the idea that there is no one way to be African. So today, I wanted to touch on the role of royal African women in one of the more patriarchal societies of the continent. And some of these roles may surprise us today. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com. Links to everything in the description box below. This video will be focusing on the history of royal women in the African Kingdom of Buganda. Keep in mind that it's not intended to be any sort of moral compass or guide for how we should construct social or political relationships today throughout the diaspora. The only purpose is to speak on a history we hear so little about and hopefully present some new information that may help in anchoring us in a more proper historical framework. Moreover, most of this information is not unique to Africa as similar structures can be found throughout the world. If anything, it affirms Africa's place in world history and the human story. This video may be a reminder of that. Anyway, let's start with a quote from one scholar that will set the tone for this historical lens. Buganda women had more power traditionally, especially informal power, than is commonly thought. Women played active roles in both a lineage and political sense in Ganda society, and it would be a mistake to view them as unimportant, even if their legal status was inferior and they knelt to their husbands. This is a very interesting quote because it alludes to a dual, almost contradictory status of women in the patriarchal Buganda societal order. But before we get into all that, where was the kingdom of Buganda and when did it flourish? Buganda was one of several kingdoms in the region of modern day Uganda that rose in about 1500. From there, Buganda slowly began to expand its territory and by the 19th century became the most powerful state in the region. Despite the earlier quote, which established the informal power of Buganda women, what also existed simultaneously was an expectation on how women should interact within society, an expectation being formulated and enforced by the men, thus leading to the patriarchal labeling of Buganda society. Regardless, we must suspend our stereotypical views of patriarchal societies and judge Buganda for the social and political fruits it actually bared. The role of the average woman seems to hold a conventional patriarchal status, but the power dynamics of royal women and those women interlaced with royalty was more complex, and it seems as though that all men, the average and the elite, needed to be keenly aware of that. Not to be taken as an unassailable fact, but my personal interpretation of Buganda history is that only the top 1% of men ruled with a sort of near absolute dominance. Everything below that may be subject to shifts or other nuances. Hopefully, you'll understand what I mean later. Women in general throughout Buganda society were seen as inferior to men in the sense that they had to be monitored, protected, and supervised. Only men could plead a woman's case in court and, if found guilty, it would be a man who was burdened with payment. Women were confined almost entirely to the home and the domestic periphery. They were even expected to kneel when greeting a man, and at times could not move about the countryside alone. This observation was readily available for any scholar or traveler to see. However, there was another layer that was not so visible. Women, like men, were also ranked in society. 
Like chiefs and male royals, the wives of chiefs, wives of the Kabaka, and female royals had a status superior to peasants and any male inferior to their guardian. As an inferior chief would kneel to his superior, so too would he kneel to that chief's important wives, suggesting that political status transcended gender status. A woman would only kneel to her equal or superior in status. It's clear that royal women and the women closely associated with royalty had different social roles. The principal royal contingent of women consisted of the queen mother, the king's sisters, the king's wives, the king's daughters, and all of the chief's sisters, wives, and daughters. It's clear that these royal women were privileged in Bugana society, many of whom had their own estates, exhibited direct political control over their own jurisdiction, had the capacity to command labor, and even appoint chiefs themselves. One interesting thing about the women in close proximity to the top 1% of men were the different categories of wives of the king. You had titled wives and non-titled wives in Buganda. Titled wives were well respected and had the right to collect taxes from certain chiefs. Interestingly enough, as the kingdom expanded, so too did the number of titled wives and the chiefs under them. Despite the social structure of Buganda and the general ideology that women needed to be supervised while navigating Bugandan spaces, all men, even some elites, did not have power over all women. The average man still needed to be mindful of which woman he was engaging with, especially the ones in proximity to power, the ones whose position may not be immediately identifiable. Yet, far from being able to ignore women, a man found himself surrounded by women with power and to whom he must show deference. Not only were a man's mother and his father's sister figures of authority, but a common man, a peasant, had to be careful to show deference and not offend the various wives of the king and the chiefs, princesses, and even the subordinate women of all of those households. The party of any important woman, as with any chief, could plunder the goods of peasants with impunity. Clearly, there was a contradiction between prevailing attitudes and reality, for there were many women beyond the two formal office holders who did exercise power over both men and women. It's interesting that even the subordinate women who worked for royalty had some power over the average man simply due to their socio-political proximity. According to this scholar, while women were considered inferior in general, the hierarchy of political status took precedence over the hierarchy of gender status. Like many other patriarchal societies around the globe, Ugandan women seem to express their power in more indirect ways than direct, largely accomplishing this through establishing relationships and positioning themselves, willingly or not, in proximity to powerful men. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.